All right, everybody, happy Friday. I'm Nick Slavic. This is the Ask a Painter Show. Uh, I've been a craftsman and an entrepreneur for more than 20 years now. And uh, Ask a Painter is a weekly live Facebook show and now Instagram show. I'm dual uh, simulcasting here, um, uh, Instagram and Facebook today. And uh, this is a weekly live show where uh, professionals, DIYers, homeowners all come together and we share best practices. We share uh, uh, all these best practices with thought leaders in the industry. And uh, today's show is a very special one. This is part two in the series of find them, train them, keep them. This is the train them part. So uh, I've walked you guys through how we find these decent human beings, the process for them. And now uh, today we're going to talk about training and there's a whole bunch of resources. So I'm going to show you the kind of resources that I pull in. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some very specific things to my company that we do uh, in order to bring these people up to speed. So uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, go to the PCA, uh, the Painting Contractors Association, and our friend Chris Shank, the education guy there, is going to have our uh, question of the week. So let's get Chris up here. Oh, there he is. What's up? How you guys doing? Chris Shank, how are you, my friend? Good. Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. We're good. All right. Fantastic. I like your little setup there. What's going on? The, I No. Everything's good here, man. Uh, it is an exciting week. Uh, we are simulcasting on Instagram today, too. Oh, so, awesome. Uh, awesome. I had uh, I had the dual camera set up for another project I'm doing, and I thought, let's just blast it out there on Instagram anyway, too. So <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that's cool. It's an interesting day here at PCA National. We have some board members here. We're actually talking about plans for 2020 all the way through 2023. We're talking about apprenticeship, We're talking about uh, the Trade Best Practice Series. We're talking about how to get learning pathways for people to get certification. It's a lot of good stuff. So here, here, because everybody's doing the meetings right now, and I was trying to grab one of the uh, board members to come in here and do this question with me, yep. but I'm just going to do this real quick. I'm going to throw out the question to you, and then I got to go and dream up cool things for PCA. Okay. Done. So here's here's the question. Okay. Then I'll hop off. When you're you know you're finishing up summer production, and the pace changes around this time. I'm not sure exactly you know what your timeline is, but when production pace changes, how does it change for you? And how do you communicate that to your employees? Dude, lots of thoughts. And I'm also going through the trade best practice series of your videos today too, because the show is all about training. So you guys have big things to do. Say hi to everybody there. I know and love each and every one of those people. Uh, if they want to hop on later, this will be going live for a long time. So we'll okay. be here. Okay, we'll do. Thanks, Nick. Say hi to everyone for me. We'll do. Okay, so how do things change? Um, right now, <laughs> yesterday, October 31st, today, November 1st, this is technically my line of demarcation in the year. Uh, in Minnesota here, we basically get six months outside, six months inside. And uh, we, I've lived my life in that sort of way uh, since I was about 10 years old, uh, living, living my life around those two seasons. My life kind of revolves around those different things. So. Uh, we have a very distinct change. Um, I try to make it to Halloween with my exterior painting every year. Historically, we're in Minnesota here in, in the upper Midwest. We're going to stop at about the second week of October uh, as we get into that. And then my company basically retools and we spend six months inside. And we're going through that right now. So a bunch of things happen. And this is not some sort of soft soft sort of uh, change in there like we have a hard stop date where that's our last exterior uh, we get rid of a bunch of our equipment we store it away i issue all new uniforms so everybody you know we check everybody's respirator we get shirts we get polo shirts we get pants uh, we get shoes uh, for some people uh, in the past we've done jackets uh, we've done, uh, you know, tool issues and we just got done with an inventory. We're getting people tools and stuff too. And we basically retool for interior season. So less extension ladders, no power washers, things like that. So it's actually a really interesting time. And we have, uh, here, I'll pull up this as well here. So what's interesting is that we keep a queue. Uh, in my company and my the queue is basically all the people waiting for their work and you can see the exterior down here we we finished almost everything we had uh, well actually we did finish everything we had to that we were slotted to 
This in purple is all the exterior jobs. These are people that are signed on for next year. And then we solely focus on our interior stuff here. So now we keep that queue. So for a while in the company now, for the next six months, we can focus on working that queue up at the top there. And now we can really focus on interior processes. So I take an hour each week in our war room meetings and I start training our people, especially at the change of seasons because we've been going hard with exterior work. We train exterior stuff in the summer to kind of uh, tighten up those processes. Now we're training on our SVT process, sand back and tack. We're adjusting our cabinet finishing process a little bit. We're experimenting with some new things, trim finishing process, wall painting process, all those sorts of things. And uh, today, uh, that dovetails very well with our show today, which is um, training. And before we jump into that deep, I got so many things here. Like I said, I got outside resources to show you. I got some very specific things for my business. Um, one of the most interesting things is um, the seasons changing. Not only do we switch from exterior work to interior work, that's what everyone else sees. Internally, this is when everything happens. This is sort of my busy season for the next four to five months because um, work in Minnesota in the dead of winter, especially now we get to Thanksgiving and Christmas, it gets to be sort of the Bermuda Triangle of the contractor thing where as soon as people put the Christmas tree up, they do not want to take on home projects. So all my marketing is focused starting in about September, October, November, December, and January. I, I basically have my entire marketing spend and all my marketing efforts over those five months in order to fill a winter in Minnesota. In summer in Minnesota, as you can imagine, we have a very short summer, maybe four and a half, five usable months and some shoulder seasons that are all wet and weird. Um, if you don't do anything, work is going to come your way and you're going to have more than enough work. In the winter, if you do nothing, your work will dry up uh, come about maybe December 1st, give or take, depending on how many people you have. But uh, in the past, what I found out, if I had about 10 painters uh, working all winter, if I did nothing and just waited for word of mouth and referral leads to come in, December 1st, the schedule got noticeably difficult to fill. All of a sudden you're seeing jobs get checked off and maybe not another job added on and you're just like, ah, what's going on? And then you get to the holiday seasons and people are taking some time off. And then there's always a lag in January first because people have kind of like, they spent a lot of money, they've done a lot of parties, it, they're on this hangover period and they're like, oh, we're not about to take a job on just, uh, January 1st. We need to reset our lives. We need to eat clean. We need to get back in a routine. And then we start again with 2020. So I've made it a point to market hard starting about uh, September 1st or September 15th, fill the schedule with a bunch of that stuff. Uh, and then basically my goal is uh, everything between Thanksgiving and Christmas, work, work, work to fill. And then everything starting January 1st, I want to book out the first two to three weeks of January, like right now, like find jobs to fill those. Because if you wait for late December, people stop answering their phones and their emails. So it's very important for me to sort of get those set so you're not scrambling. Because the week of Christmas, trying to fill the first week of January with It's a big difference for me. Like summer, fun, fairly easy, lots going on, long days, whatever. But now, I mean, I'm doing eight estimates a day right now uh, based on all the marketing that's coming out here in order to fill uh, this winter. So it's it's very busy for me um, now until about, you know, the end of February when uh, when the natural pace of things start picking, picking up just, uh, you know, organic leads, uh, word of mouth and all that stuff sort of increases here. So, uh, all right, so let's talk about training. Uh, in a video in the past, I was actually on the Veterans One Day One House project. Uh, for the Veterans, I talked about finding decent human beings. So I showed you who I look for, how I find them, how I bring them in. Now you've got all these people. And if you guys have seen my modern uh, uh, apprenticeship class on there, you know, we're in a, in a community in a, in a county with about 2% unemployment right here. And I've been able to find tons and tons of people, as many people as I can find or as many people as I want. And then I've been able to sort of uh, get through them and then, uh, you know, figure out who I want based on the good ones. So I've been very blessed with all that. Now we've got all these people. What do we do with them? So. I'm obviously known for bringing young, happy people uh, off the street, decent human beings, teaching them the trade. Uh, this takes a lot of effort, as you guys know. So number one, I'm going to tell this from the start. If you think, now, there are tons of good outside resources out there, but you have to supplement resources with effort, intentionality, and uh, accountability. There is no substitute for that. There are a few truths going forward here that I want everybody to sort of internalize, which is, 
I've never met a painting company in the United States that doesn't know how to train a painter in painting. The problem is we don't want to take the time to train people in painting. So the biggest hurdle for me is not how do you train these people? What people are really asking is how do I put forth no effort and get a perfect painter that makes money in no time? And you could sort of not have those two things at once. So once people get over the fact that they know how to train somebody perfectly, they just need to put effort for it. Now you can start putting in all these external resources in order to bolster that. You, you uh, turn it into some internal stuff, very specific to your company, and then accountability. You have to keep up with these people. It takes time. Almost no, comp no painting company uh, that I've ever met in the United States has a R&D budget, research and design. Every painter basically says we have money for labor, we have money for materials, there's some marketing, there's some other overhead stuff, and then that's the company. Nowhere in there is there a research budget or is there a training or development budget. We need to start thinking about uh, an investment in trucks and equipment in the same way we think about investment in people with time. And it's a softer cost because it's not something like you buy a sprayer, you know a cost, you put it in the field, and you can feel it, and you can feel the return on it right away. Investing in people is squishy and soft and, and subjective and things like that. But I will tell you this. People come to me and they say, hey, send me your apprenticeship program. Uh, I want to learn how to train my people. I said, nothing in there will blow your mind. I have some pretty nice resources. I gather from a lot of other of the greatest thought leaders in the industry. But I think the biggest difference with us is that we think about it, we focus on it, we carve out time for it, we know what to expect uh, when we ramp people up, we find good people to put in, and then we never stop putting effort towards those people. Uh, I, it seems like what people are asking when they call me and say, how do you train people, is how can I hire somebody, give them minimal instruction, and then never worry about them again? And that is not the case. This is not a set it and forget it business. You need to put constant effort into this stuff. So I'm going to show you some of the resources that I've gathered through the industries. Uh, Purdy and Sherwin-Williams are awesome, awesome resources for this. The PCA, the Painting Contractors Association, is another one. I'm going to show you a few things in there uh, that I use uh, to bolster my training. Okay, so you'll, uh, you'll likely recognize some of this stuff here. So number one. If you're a member of the PCA, you might recognize this guy. Um, there is a whole education section in there that uh, you can actually get just by being a member. So if you are in, if you're a member, uh, you can go in the education center with which Chris Shank curates, develops, uh, all sorts of awesome stuff in there. You can uh, you can get all sorts of resources, and the the resources are only limited by the amount of time you have to put in it. So I have my modern apprenticeship. Uh, I have a 17 minute version of that where I condense my, you know, multi hour thing that I give in person to about 17 minutes to get, hit the high, high notes on there. Uh, you can get that in there just by being a member and that's all in there. And then obviously there's a way to contact me and we can elaborate on that. Now there is also the trade best practice series too. So, what you want to do is uh, comb through the education section, and there's a whole bunch of other resources in here for you uh, that you can use. You can see uh, the wonderful pretty hand tool here, but there's basically uh, videos, you know, uh, taping, masking, huddle up, personal protective gear, sanding, things like that. All great resources for the trade. Now, a super robust uh, training thing, and, and again, this one here, that stuff is behind the membership wall. Uh, you got to be a member of the PCA. Uh, this other set of resources is free right now on the internet for you. Uh, Sherwin-Williams created an awesome, awesome resource, um, Paint Your Path. And there's a whole bunch of training in there as well. So if you go to the Paint Your Path website, you'll, you'll notice this. And one of the cool things about the Paint Your Path thing, if you, if you look in here long enough, we'll see if we can find, oh, maybe he's not in there. But uh, friend of the show, friend of mine, and local Minnesotan who operates in my same area, Rob Lenzen, is actually part of this video series. So it's so awesome to see that they found an awesome craftsperson here uh, to be part of this. But you go to Paint Your Path right here. You scroll down like this, and you're going to see Take a Course, Online Training. You can click on this guy, and that'll take you to, now, 
this is really cool. So it's not just what brush, what roller. That's in there, and that's good. But there's a whole bunch of really unique stuff that I haven't seen before in a sort of far-reaching uh, system of stuff like this. So uh, number one, you have color basics, which is really cool, which is one of the videos that I actually uh, was a little bit of a surprise to me when I first went through here. I kind of thought I knew what to expect. This is a really good video, and it's got some really good insight from uh, Design Pro in our industry. Uh, they talk about paint ingredients. Uh, we got paint selection, brush and roller, obviously, which we touched on a recent show. Uh, repair and touch-up. That's another cool thing. They actually show you some very specific things, how to repair some, uh, some painting stuff. Care and maintenance, spray application, and then uh, safety course for ladders, too. So these are super good resources that companies internally sometimes spend tens of thousands of dollars on. Just free. Just go. It's right now. This is all free for you. And one of the cool videos... Um, you know i've been around for quite a long time uh, i look for f sort of unique kind of interesting um uh very sort of uh thought leader-ish sort of stuff uh watch the color video on here this is really good stuff seriously there is a uh it's a six minute video with jackie jordan uh and you can get on here and it's uh it's such a cool resource uh where they can talk about different you know aspects of color and maybe some things you haven't heard about before so really cool there and at the end of these things, there is uh, quizzes too. So you can take a quiz at the end. You can also put your people through all this stuff, which I did uh, with my company. When these first came out, I put everybody in my business through this stuff. And you can quiz, and then you can follow their uh, ratings and stuff like that. And if, uh, if you start noticing a whole bunch of people get a question wrong, now you got a topic for discussion. So very interesting, uh, very interesting resources out there for people if you want it. And uh, so robust, you're only limited uh, with the amount of time that you put into this uh, stuff here. If you keep digging, you will find so many good resources out there for people, for your company. All right, so now, how about some stuff specific to my business? So I'm going to use uh, one of my ways that uh, we get people in. Maybe I should talk about this, too. Once we get somebody into the company, there's a there's a sort of admin onboarding process that we do. Obviously, W-4, I-9, uh, you issue them some uniforms, things like that. I like my people's first day, and this is all training. I like my people's first day to be part of a war room meeting. So I want them to show up Monday morning, 7 o'clock. We follow the same agenda, same time, same place. Uh, every day, in, the entire company meets every sun, er, every Monday morning for an hour, and we do a little training. We talk about projects. Uh, we talk about any uh, anything. It's basically open door policy. From that first time they're in the company, they see how we talk to each other. They see the robust sort of uh, uh, analytics that we have. They see our scheduling, our spreadsheets, and they sort of get a feel for the company right away. Um, we have a tendency in, in the trades to sort of hire people, send them out in the field and be like, good, I don't ever want to talk to this person again. I'll pay them so much and I just don't want problems. I want them to continually get better all the time. But what we really need to do is, is intentionally start spending time with these people and have more touch points with them. So um, I feel self-conscious that we don't have more touch points. I try to get around to maybe one uh, job site every day or two just to check in on how things are going, insert myself at critical points. Uh, but I think that uh, once a week, even for an hour, is not enough. I think you need to do some other stuff. So there's a whole bunch of other things that we get into, and maybe that's probably a little more retention. But first day, uh, war room meeting. Uh, oh, yes, and if you guys have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions or whatever, type them down below, and, uh, and we'll get to them here. But uh, war room meeting, and then I like to pair them up with a, uh, one of the most senior craftspeople in my company. Now, I'm very blessed to have a crafts person named Tina in my company. And not only is she an amazing person, amazing crafts person, she is a self-expressed lover of training. <laughs> and that is a very valuable thing. And I wouldn't have ever known that if we didn't do quarterly reviews. So four times a year, we sit down, me and production manager Holly, we sit down with everybody in the company for an hour, hour and a half, and we basically just rate them on a bunch of stuff and then let them talk. Anything they, anything they want to talk about. We set goals for them follow up on past calls and in these meetings you find out things like I've had somebody come up to me and say I want to be a leader I want to be in charge of other people I want to uh, I want to hold them accountable and do some other stuff good that never would have came out in a regular weekly meeting Tina self-expressed she wanted to train and uh, and and she is a good trainer so we try to pair our new people with Tina first. Now, the last time we hired people we hired uh, I, I attempted to hire three people only two people made the cut 
uh, at once. So I onboarded two people at once, and then we, we tried to get at least one to Tina and one to another senior craftsperson in the company. Uh, but, you know, obviously uh, we, we would like everything to funnel through Tina, but because of the amount of people, I don't want to overwhelm her with two apprentices, so we split them up. But as we hire one person at a time, we really try to uh, put that through Tina because Tina exemplifies the core values of the company, and she is good. She's got the temperament and the mentality for all this stuff. So number one, I will say this. When I think about training, I do not think about the specific stuff about the painting stuff. That stuff, just by absorption, will happen. And yes, we are intentional about that. We do that. But I think about core values, culture, um, all the soft stuff in a company. I want them to be inculcated into this thing where they feel like they're a member of the group. I never want them to feel isolated. I want them to feel a part of this team. I want them to feel like they can contribute. And honestly, if you have to ask me, if you can say, I want to have a world-class technical painting program or a world-class fellowship, family atmosphere, uh, everybody adheres to core values, I will take that all the time. That leads to a much better training environment a lot of the times than just pure technical mastery. Uh, you really need to have these people invested. They will pick it up quicker and better if they are truly, truly invested in this stuff. So uh, a couple more things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you an example of the technical stuff that I use to bolster uh, this sort of thing. And if this person feels excited, if they see how much I love the craft and they're inspired by it, if they feel like a member of the team, if they feel like they can trust everybody there, if they feel like this is an exciting place to work, they're going to look at this stuff, which is normally kind of dry, maybe not that interesting, and all of a sudden be interested by it. So I'm going to talk about my exterior SOP and how I use it to the technical side. And again, technical side is maybe only 20% of what I consider training people, but I'm going to show you what I do for mine to at least get that 20% covered. So for the exterior of a house, I redid my entire standard operating procedure this last year. We've trained it heavy and we had awesome results this year. So it all starts with the big boy. This is the big master standard operating procedure. This thing uh, we print it out. I laminate it with super thick lamination. We spiral bind it and it's about this thick. Now the pages are super thick, but there's probably, I don't know, let's see how many pages are in here. All right, so we got 97 pages. Now, not all these are super technical. Not every page is a step, but this is how I train. And I have a philosophy of, about how to do this stuff, which is you have the master, you have the big one, you have the thing that explains everything, most of the minute details, all the ideas, and then uh, you work with hands-on with that. And, and, I leave, uh, and, and I lead the people in that to kind of show them uh, what I expect out of it. The next thing is getting into the field and practicing it. And yes, they take this thing into the field, you know, that it's beautiful, waterproof, spiral bound, but we condense it down into a checklist. I'm going to walk through this first, but I just want to give you guys context that this is the thing that I train with. I then have a simple version of this that everybody uses daily. So number one, again, standard branding. I always list out some perspective first. So Remember this, I always tell my people, this SOP is 70%. If you follow this like a robot, you'll do this job 70% correct. You have to add in common sense, no matter what. And this is something that you can't train, you can't really have a standard operating procedure for. You can create a, a warm brotherhood, a foster, uh, foster uh, a family type atmosphere and trust. And then ma magically common sense will show up eventually. So uh, the secret, this is it. And I preach this over and over again. The most successful craftspeople I've ever employed understand one thing, which is I do a task, I do it 100%, then I move on to the next task. No exceptions. We talk about different types of homes that we do. Uh, historic homes, wood homes here in the upper Midwest, masonite and a hardboard, uh, LP, hardy, set of uh, manufactured siding. I give people some perspective about what we do. Stucco, things like that. And then the basic process. We prep, we prime, we paint, we deprep. That's it. Every, every single house that I've ever done has some combination, more or less, uh, bullet points within each one of those things, which is we do something to prep it to make a good substrate, uh, we prime it if it needs to, we paint it, and then we deprep. Easy enough, right? So we go through some different products that we use, things like that. Some specific things there. Oh, you can see some Purdy and some Sherwin. Uh, from, from the first slide, so step one. Now we're already you know 15 slides into this. Step one, 
uh, the responsibility as the crew leader and the process, we have to greet the client. Uh, after we greet the client, you introduce yourself, hand them a calling card. So uh, we get all of our crew leaders calling cards. It's basically a business card with their phone number on it, their uh, picture on it. It's, it's the first point of contact for a job. Um, we verify the scope of the project. So we've already done this. Uh, I, I sort of start gathering the scope. Production manager slash client concierge Holly firms that up 100%. And then the person on site just verifies, just to make sure. We are painting the outside of your house, tan siding, white trim. Yes, homeowner? Good. What are we painting? What are the colors? What are the finishes? Verify the coatings and the color match our jump sheet, which is this, uh, this internal document here. These are what our calling cards look like. Uh, and then throw out the yard sign. It's an important thing. It's good marketing. So create a project plan. So this is something that we introduced this year to the company and uh, people are very curious about. I have each one of my people fill out an hour by hour plan for them for the entire day and then for the entire duration of the project. It helps people understand that when we have a hundred hour budget on a project, you know, if you're working 10 hour days, you've got 10 days to finish that project. So what has to happen to each one of those 10 days to keep you on budget? Then I have my people capture before pictures, uh, just for reference. Uh, a lot of this is for pic uh, pictures of existing damage. So if there's paint on the shingles, paint on you know blocks like this, uh, we capture all that stuff. Uh, and I base I we teach people how to take before and after pictures because a lot of the time, a Mike Danny, how's it going? Uh, a lot of the time, people will take a picture of the front of the house. Uh, before and then just move around and not get the same angle after you want the same before and after because this is way more satisfying to look at than uh, two different angles so same thing here before and after actually this is one of the first houses I ever did a live video on years and years ago that introduced me to the PCA now same thing there you want to get those right angles uh, we have a set up our shop we have a standard operating procedure for how to lay out our totes so there's a set number of totes in the company with a set amount of gear and we show people how to lay it out that includes uh, this guy down here, which is we lay a drop cloth out, we lay our paint out in, in steps and lanes. Colors and finishes and types of paint all get laid out separately, so when you're looking at it, they're all separated, nothing gets mixed, uh, mixed up, and you move on. So we have a clean uh, picture of a clean and orderly job site. We have ladders going up, we have prep starting, we have the nice totes here, we have the ladders laid out in a single sort of layer so you if you have a stack of ladders you got to dig through that stack all the time to find something you lay those ladders out nicely clean job site another step and lane you can see young craftsman uh, Aaron down here he put out uh, nice steps and lanes of all his paint you can see the beautiful prep going on right there and then uh, morning crew meeting so basically uh, uh, if a crew leader has more than a couple people on site they have a meeting together and they and they give goals to every person in the company and that coincides with these project plans Move the client's personal items, uh, cut trees and bushes down like this, uh, protect the landscaping, uh, a little key here, uh, taking down exterior lights. So we, we put a lot of, uh, you know, uh, different images of, you know, how, how to take them down, how to, where to put them, things like that, downspouts and gutters. And we kind of have infographics here about what to take down, what not to take down, uh, plastic off windows and doors. And one of the cool things is uh, we actually have... Uh, I video, uh, as you can imagine, lots of this stuff, and I have uh, SOPs for almost everything we do in the company, which is, let's see if we can fast forward here. So this is a four and a half minute video where I show you how to plastic a window. And in this window, it takes me about two to two and a half minutes to plastic a window. So when I show my people, like, listen guys, when you're around this house, it takes you three minutes to plastic a window. So let's see, that's our goal. That's what we can do. Let's just go forth and do it now. Okay, we show people what tight prep is. Tight prep to me is just beautiful laid out plastic, no weird stuff flying around, no errant tape and plastic and all this other stuff. Beautiful tight prep on the outside of a newly sided house there. Uh, ladder braces too, we kind of show people what we expect out of ladder braces and safety stuff. Uh, plastic miscellaneous stuff. So on this uh, historic stucco home that we did, we showed people how to how to mask some of the weird stuff that kind of comes into play in these houses. Uh, yep, for spraying too, plastic off the soffits. Working on roofs, horizontal surfaces. So we have a standard operating procedure for uh, masking off the roof and then uh, uh, tarping that. Again, another 
another video showing uh, showing people what we expect out of some foundation masking here. So again, everything's all laid out. So if the apprentices want to watch this stuff, I mean, I teach it, but if they want to watch it, all this stuff is here and it's laid out with times as well uh, for people to do. Drop cloth the immediate work area. And then I actually show people how all this stuff, all this drop clothing can take place in three minutes. And part of that is giving people a goal, which is when you say drop cloth the outside of a house or drop cloth this area in this video, you know, we have two, we have two kinds of drop cloths, big square sheets and runners, the, the four or five foot wide ones by about 20 feet. And sometimes they just look at them and just kind of lay them down haphazardly. It takes a while. I can show you strategically what drop cloth to put where and it'll take you three minutes. So this whole uh, sort of accountability thing, which is, come on guys, let's do this. It takes three minutes to drop cloth this side of the house. If it did not take you three minutes, what are we missing? Is there something I can teach you? Is there something that I can uh, you know, educate you on? So safety stuff too, non-slip drop cloths on especially these decks like this. Uh, scraping, loose paint. So what not to look for in paint when scraping, because scraping is a very subjective thing. Uh, sanding bare wood. Proper protective gear, sanding there. How to brush. So tips from me on how to brush siding. Uh, we have 100% uh, coverage. So harken back to that first slide of the secret to all this is 100%. That includes, if you're going to paint something, paint it 100%. No open pores, no cracks, no nothing. Just beautiful, nice coverage. So again, wet edge. We teach people what a wet edge is there. We overlap onto our trim. Again, all fine points, but if all these things are not done right, it doesn't make for a very good paint job. So again, spot prime or full prime, all that stuff. I'm not gonna go through the rest of this. We got 97 pages there, but this is condensed down into this uh, for my people in the field. This is our exterior SOP checklist. So for every one of those slides where you saw step one, greeting, calling card, yard sign, verify scope. It's condensed down into this because my people use all their smartphones in the field and this can be pulled up on their smartphone and they can just say, okay, step one, greeting, calling card, yard sign, verify scope. Easy enough. I'm going to knock on the door, hand them my calling card, throw a yard sign out, verify the scope. When that's done, you put a little check box there and you're done, ready to go. And you go right on down here. And I separate out uh, these checklists, prep, paint, deprep. So you can visually see here how much of what we do is prep, which is most of it, a little bit of painting, and then some deprep at the end. But this is basically the quick reference guide because everybody's been trained in the big SOPs. Then you go back down to this. Once or twice a year, we supplement with all the, uh, the PCA stuff, the Sherwin stuff, uh, the Paint Your Path stuff too. We kind of introduce a lot of that stuff in there, the fine points. But this is basically it. And I will tell you the key to this. If you just make this, and send it out there and say, hey guys, just follow this. Good luck. Most humans will not comply 100% with this. The special good ones will. Most people will not. So the key to this, you can't just make this and throw it up in your Google Drive and expect everything to go well. You need to be asking on every job. This is why we do the project plan. So on day one, you go through and they say, well, we were going to do everything up to, you know, we're going to get the whole house masked and everything and we're going to start scraping. So that means that they were gonna be on about step 14. And we'll go through and say, okay, so following your checklist, you start at one. Did you greet the client? Did you create a project plan? Did you get your pictures? Did you set up shop? Did you have a morning crew meeting? And that's basically a way to uh, to verify whether they did it or not. So, and most of that uh, falls on a client concierge, Holly, uh, to follow up with all that stuff. But every once in a while, I bump in and take care of that stuff too. Yeah, that's basically what we what we do. We we have the big piece of training, the robust piece of training. We have the quick reference guide in the field, and then a lot of human action in, interaction to make sure everybody's complying and uh, following up with that stuff. So, all right. So let's see if we got any questions. Then obviously we have tons and tons of supplements for people uh, videos. I even have uh, this one. People get a kick out of this one. Uh, especially Chris Shank, but it's uh, it's a 14 minute video of me washing a stack of brushes and rollers, and uh, it's it's sort of mesmerizing. Like I love watching other other painters paint, and uh, it's really fun. It's almost like you know you put it on the background, and uh, there's running water, and there's brushes swishing, and it's almost like this ASMR sort of uh, um, you know white noise sort of thing. But it's uh, it's a really funny video, and uh, when painters see it, it's sort of satisfying for us to see it. 
it's uh it's dry as heck if you're not in the painting industry but kind of funny either way so let's see if we got any any questions here all right i really appreciate everybody watching here uh it's been a good day uh also the last thing i'll mention before we get out of here is uh we've started building a house and uh it's uh you can follow along with the uh, with the hashtag slavic house and house is spelled h-a-u-s uh, my wife and I own a hobby farm uh, right outside of town. It's a 20-acre little wilderness preserve that we've owned for about five years. About three years ago, we started the process of building a house. Lots of uh, going-ons with the county and things like that. And finally, we're building. They're actually putting in the foundation today. Uh, footings got poured earlier in the week. They're putting up the block now, and we're going to proceed. So if you guys want to follow along progress, as you can imagine, Lots of videos, lots of pictures, lots of descriptions, lots of first principle reasoning, which I'm a fan of. And uh, yeah, follow along the hashtag Slavic House. So thank you to the PCA for being an awesome underwriter of this. Uh, I hope everybody at HQ is having fun up there. Wonderful bunch of people who are very uh, into training. That's a big thing on their mind right now, uh, apprenticeship and all this other stuff. So uh, look for the third series uh the third video in the series of these which is find them train them keep them the next one will be on keep them and that'll be uh, coming up in the future here uh thank you to sherwin uh for providing all those resources too and underwriting the show and purdy as well uh, everybody knows and loves them they've been uh, they've been great to the show and they've uh, they've been nice enough to put out resources like that which we're big fans of so thanks everybody have a good weekend uh, also everybody on instagram we're simulcasting down here we got the other iphone going too everybody have a good weekend uh, enjoy, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.